You're watching Keystone Science, and in today's episode, we're going to show you how to make your very own induction heater. The first thing we're going to do is learn how to make this induction heater. And then after I show you guys that, I'm going to explain to you the science behind why it works. In last week's episode, we made a thing called a ZVS driver and we used it to create high voltage arcs. And so that same ZVS driver is going to be our primary circuit behind our induction heater. So if you want to learn how to make this circuit, go ahead and click on the first link in the description below where you can watch last week's video. Now the induction heater is going to be drawing even more current than that flyback transformer was. And so with the build I showed last time, I was running into a problem with the wires melting. And so I went through and replaced the wires with these lower gauge wires in order to handle the current. Anyways, I wound some of this thick wire onto PVC pipe to generate this coil. If you're curious, this coil is about an inch high and an inch in diameter. In the center, I attached this wire here so we could have that center tapped position to hook up to the ZVS driver. Now these specifications don't really matter all that much towards the overall effectiveness of the end product. In fact, I made another coil like this and it works pretty well as well. The only downside to this one is that the coil does get a little bit warm because the wire isn't that thick. So let's go ahead and attach this coil up to the ZVS driver. Okay, the coil is successfully hooked up. Induction heating will only work on ferrous metals. What I mean by this is that induction heating will only work on metals that you could stick a magnet to and it'll stay there. So for instance, things like copper won't heat up. I'm going to be testing this paper clip through the induction heater. Notice right when I turn it on, the current draw will be pretty high. But then also watch when I stick the inductive load, aka this metal, into the coil, the current draw is going to go further up. As you can see, it raises by about three amps when I stick this paper clip into it. Watch how fast this paper clip will turn red hot when I stick it into the coil while letting it draw around 22 volts DC. This process of heating through induction happens mostly through a thing called eddy currents. Now I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen the trick where you drop a magnet down a copper pipe and then it goes a lot slower down the pipe than it would falling through air. But if not, here's a quick clip of it. Now what's happening here is also eddy currents. And so as the magnet falls down the pipe, the magnetic field that the magnet has exerts electrons inside the copper pipe. Now these electrons will spin in a circular motion. This spinning of electrons inside the copper pipe creates a magnetic field, and that magnetic field is going to have an opposite force to that of the magnet falling, and so that way the magnet is slowed down as it's falling through. And so with our ZVS driver, a similar thing is happening. When this transistor turns on, we're getting a positive voltage, and when this transistor turns on, we're getting a negative voltage. So looking at just these transistors here, we get a square wave that goes to a positive and negative voltage. And then this square wave is inputted into these coils here. Due to a thing called resonant frequency, the positive and negative charge are dumped into this capacitor here, and so across this coil, we get a sine wave. Now since the electrical current is alternating through this, we're getting an alternating magnetic field. I made a video a while back showing how to transfer energy wirelessly, and so if you want to learn more about that, I'll have it linked in the description. But anyways, just like dropping that magnet down the copper pipe, this alternating magnetic field is inducing a current inside of whatever ferrous metal it can get around. If this sheet of aluminum were to represent the metal that we were putting inside of it, we'd see the electrons moving in swirling patterns like this. Due to Ohm's law, we know that voltage equals current times resistance, and power in watts is equal to voltage times amps, and current is going to be equal to voltage divided by resistance. So using this, we could also say that the power is going to be equal to the voltage squared divided by the resistance. Now since this metal does have a resistance through each of the eddy currents, that power in watts is going to be emitted through the form of heat, and so that's why the paper clip became red hot within a few seconds. Now it's also a good thing to know that since this magnetic field is going to be alternating, we'll know that the eddy current induced is going to be alternating in the exact opposite way. So basically, at the same time that this coil will be giving this waveform, the thing that it's inducing it to will be giving a waveform of this. Now this is due to a thing called Lenz's Law. Lenz's Law basically states that an object that has an induced current upon it will have the opposite charge of induced current based on from what the original object was. So basically, going back to the copper pipe and magnet, the copper pipe is going to have an opposite current induced in it, and basically that also is going to have that opposite magnetic field pushing back up onto the magnet. As a side note, you can figure out the force of the eddy currents pushing back up using the copper pipe. Since we know the force of gravity is going to equal to the mass of the magnet times 9.8 meters per second squared, then also knowing the distance that the magnet fell and also the time, you could use that to calculate the force that the eddy currents were exerting back up onto it. Now there's another YouTuber whose channel name is Proto G, and he has much stronger induction heaters as you can see in this clip here. So if you guys want to go check out some of his videos, I'll leave his channel linked in the description. So now you know how to create your own induction heater and some of the principles behind it. Thank you all so much for watching the video. If you learned something new, I'd appreciate it if you'd leave a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see my weekly science videos, go and hit the subscribe button so they'll show up in your subscription newsfeed. Now if you do the induction heating that I showed in this video, the metal is going to get very hot, so make sure you're holding it with pliers or something so you don't burn yourself. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you. Please remember to be safe and have a wonderful day. You're watching Keystone Science, and in today's episode, we're going to show you how to make an extremely powerful arc lighter.